you know, every one of us in this room faces challenges. There's no such thing as a challenge-free life, not even for a Christian. And we tend to do this when we face challenges. We back down, we become paralyzed, or we even run away. And God is wanting you this morning to face up to your challenges. So I wanna speak to you this morning on facing up to life's challenges. When you see the challenges in our country, we need to face up to them, not immigrate. Come on. Who's gonna build a nation if we all leave? And you're gonna face challenges. You know, when you run away from something, you face it somewhere else. Peter denied Jesus and ran away when they challenged him at the fire. Guess what? He backed down, but Jesus found him later and brought him back to learn that lesson. You can't run away from challenges. You'll have to face them somewhere. If you run away from a marriage challenge, you're gonna face it in your next marriage. Ask anyone who's been married more than once. They'll tell you. Think of King David this morning. The Bible says that he fought the lion and the bear. Isn't that true? Guess what? That set him up to fight the giant. And fighting the giant, all three of those were a challenge, set him up to become king. So do you want to be a king? Or do you just want to be sitting amongst the sheep? Well, amongst the sheep is where you'll find the lion. And if you face up to the lion, he'll give you a bear. If you face up to the bear, he'll give you a giant. If you face up to the giant, he'll make you a king. We need to face up. And the eight things this morning that David did that I want to give you that we need to do as we face up to the challenges in our lives. Number one, the first thing you need to do is stand when everyone else is running. Stand for God when everyone else is running. Average people run from challenges, but kingdom people stand when they're challenges. God can never give us victory if we run away. And if you're facing marriage challenges, don't run away from them. Emotional challenges, financial challenges, spiritual challenges. Don't do what most people do. Stand when everyone else is running. I love what Paul says to the Philippians. He says, most people around here are looking out for themselves with little concern for the things of Jesus. But you know yourselves that Timothy's the real thing. He's been a devoted son. Are you the real thing this morning? Or are you gonna be like most people? They come to church once a month. They're half committed or they come when they have challenges. Now I'm, I'm, I'm standing. There are giants in my mind, giants in my home, giants in the nation, but I'm standing. <laughs> Number two, expect success when everyone is expecting defeat. Expect, do you expect victory? Oh no, this is too big for me. Hope is the constant expectation of good. It's the basis of faith. Expect a good outcome no matter how big the challenge. Some of you say, oh, you don't know my family. You don't know my boss. Oh, look at South Africa. It's been 20 years. No, expect a better outcome when everyone else is expecting defeat. David stood up and he spoke to Goliath. I wanna just quote a little bit of this from 1 Samuel. It says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Watch us, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've defied. I don't wanna read the whole thing this morning, but you know what, he expected victory. Why? He expected victory because he knew God was in charge and he wasn't alone. And this morning, you don't just expect victory because you're positive. Our Apostle Norris told us to be, let's just be positive. No, no, we can be positive because he's on our side. When we face up to our challenges, God's behind us. He goes before me, he goes behind me. And he expects me to act on his behalf in the earth. Number three, the third thing we need to do is speak when everyone else is silent. Israel was intimidated, but David spoke up. He spoke to his challenge. Do you speak to your challenge? You need to. You need to get up in the morning and say, tiredness, I speak to you. Hunger, I speak to you. Lust, I speak to you. Fear, I speak to you. Discouragement, I speak to you. You speak the word over it. And David told the giant, yeah, today I'm declaring to you, we need to face our challenges and speak up and speak to them. I love it says there, David said to the Philistine, when everyone else was quaking, he spoke up. Are you a speaker today or do you back down? We need to declare that we can and will. In fact, David said, I will and God will. Today I will, I'll cut off your head and I'll give your carcass to the birds there and the Lord will. 
You need to begin to believe and speak. Everyone else is silent. Oh, who knows, brother? No, you stand. You expect. You speak. Number four, the fourth thing you do is you need to know when everyone else is ignorant. Some people think ignorance is stupidity. No, ignorance means you just don't know. You can be brilliant, but you don't know. In fact, some people can have three degrees, but they don't know the word. You need to know what God's word says. David knew who God was. David knew who Israel was, and because he knew, he was able to face. You'll never face up if you don't know. God is the head of the armies of Israel. We're not here alone. You might be big, but he is almighty. No, when everyone else is ignorant. The fifth thing we need to do this morning is run towards him when everyone's running away. I love 1 Samuel 17 and 48. It says, as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly forward. How good is that? Are you running quickly forward this morning or are you immobilized? Everyone's running away. We need to face our challenges. We're getting divorced. No, we're not. We're going for the 10th counseling session. Oh, we think it's a waste of time. Well, that's you. We'll continue to face our challenge till there's healing. You've been prayed for for your body how many times? I wouldn't bother, you know. No, I'm going to continue to have prayer because maybe I won't be healed, but I'll get grace to cope. Run towards when everyone else is running away. Come on, church. Let's face up to our challenges. Number six, are you still with me? Believe when everyone else is doubting. Stand, speak, expect. Run towards. Believe when everyone else. Most people are doubting, but you're not. Most seasoned soldiers ran away. Most seasoned soldiers didn't believe. Even King Saul had no faith. But one young man believed. And I tell you what, it just takes one person to stand up. It's amazing what you can trigger. And Saul didn't believe, but David believed. I'll tell you what, the devil is asking the same question he asked of Eve. All those years ago in the book of Genesis, hath God really said? When it comes to tithing, hath God really said? When it comes to living together, hath God really said? When it comes to creation versus evolution, hath God really said? When it comes to marriage, hath God really said? When it comes to overcoming, hath God really said? Yes, he hath really said. Because all scripture is God breathed. We need to believe God when everyone else is doubting. 